Hello learners, welcome to our session today. I'm your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So in our class today, I'll want us to talk of a very important concept in our syllabus. And it's not only for purpose of doing the examinations only, but also remember the concept that I want us to study today will also assist us to apply it in a practical world, more so for finance students and accounting students. This concept is very key. And the concept that you want to study today, this is a concept known as what? Cost, volume, profit analysis. Cost, volume, profit analysis is our concept of today. First thing first, we should understand where CVP is coming from. What you need to have in mind always is that you'll find that CVP, ideally, this is one of the applications of marginal costing. It's one of the applications of marginal costing. It's one of the application of marginal costing. And whenever you're talking of marginal costing, the whole idea is behind what? Variable costing. Variable costs. Variable costs. Again, the same same concept you'll find that is going to be applied in short term planning decisions. It's going to be applied in short term planning decisions. It's going to be applied in short term planning decisions. And you'll find that these two, they do share a common element. We are talking of variable costs because also when you'll be looking at our short-term planning decisions, ideally you'll find that these are costs that will tend to change within a short period of time. Take for example my good students when you're looking at it in this case so that I want you to get this concept clearly. I want you to get this concept clearly. So take for example when you're looking at rent. When you're looking at a cost of rent, Maybe we've agreed with our landlord that probably I'll be paying a figure of 100 shillings, say, like, on a monthly basis. In this case, a question will be, if we produce, say, like, one unit, will our rent change because I've produced one unit? Of course, it won't change. If we produce one million units, if we produce one million units, will our rent increase because we produce more units? No, it won't change. So you'll find that in this concept, ideally, fixed cost, because you say this is one of the examples of fixed cost rent, you'll find that in such an event, this will tend to remain constant, irrespective of the level of output. Therefore, it won't affect us on a short-term basis. But take, for example, this other case, when you are talking of, say, like material cost. When you are talking of material cost. When you are talking of material cost. What will be the impact? Assuming today, this material cost is going for 200 shillings. Maybe I need, say, like 1,000 units. I need, say, like 1,000 units. You'll find that the cost I'm going to incur here, that should give us roughly like 200,000 shillings. Right? But put, if in this event, because they are not constant, material costs they'll tend to vary. They'll tend to vary. So I'm having... 1,000 units have incurred 200,000 units. They have incurred 200,000 shillings. What if in the event that our production increases, what if in the event that our production increases, say like to 2,000 units, and the cost of material less is still the same, 200, but in this case, my production has increased to 2,000 units. What will happen to this cost? You'll find that this cost will go up to 400,000 shillings. So you'll find that ideally, this is one component that will tend to affect us in our short term, in our short term decisions. So at this point, based on the cost, or if maybe assuming the cost increases, it will be upon the organization to decide based on their budget. Should we produce this number of units or we should not produce this number of units? Of course, based on the cost that we are, based on the cost that we are incurring. So you will find that... Uh, now, this is where CVP concept will come in, or the aspect of application of marginal or short-term planning decision. 
ideally it will come in in areas whereby I'm having factors that will tend to affect us in a short term basis. So ideally this is the concept that we'll be looking at at any given point whenever we'll be talking of marginal costing. So remember among the application of marginal costing is CVP. It's not only CVP. I'm saying it's not only CVP but one of the applications of marginal costing is is CVP analysis is CVP analysis now after we've understood this concept because I want you guys to have the concept first of all right if you have the concept right going forward you'll find that it will be very very easy for us to understand now the concept of CVP analysis we've looked at that concept and we looked at areas where we can apply that so after we've done that on my good student, a question that you're going to ask ourselves now then is what is CVP analysis? What is CVP analysis? That's a good question that you're going to ask ourselves. So we'll just look at it briefly. When we're, whenever we are talking of CVP analysis, ideally I'll just be looking at the study of the effects of profits, the study of the effects of profits study of the effect study of the effects of future profits study of the effects of future profits to changes in to changes in cost volume and sales a very simple definition of CVP analysis. We are saying is a study of the effects of future profit to changes in costs, volume, and, and sales. To changes in costs, volume, and, and sales. A very simple definition of CVP analysis that you must always have at the back of your mind. Now, after we've uh, talked of that, probably a good student will ask, Molimo, why are we studying CVP analysis? What is the main agenda of us studying CVP analysis? So you'll find that our main case or the main idea of us studying CVP analysis ideally is to understand the relationship between these variables. To understand the relationship between these variables toward to our profits to understand the relationship between these two uh, the variables that we mentioned here to to our profit of course in in future and ideally this will assist us to make very wise decisions this will assist us to make very wise decisions to make very wise decisions now after you've looked at the foundation of CVP analysis, another concept that you must always note, and I think we've started with that concept, whereby we mentioned that CVP analysis is based on the concept of marginal costing. So we are saying that CVP analysis, CVP analysis is based on the concept, is based on the concept of marginal costing is based on the concept of marginal costing cvp analysis is based on the concept of marginal costing and as we've seen that marginal costing ideally it will evolve it will revolve around variable costs it will revolve around the variable cost so you are saying CVP is based on the concept of marginal, of marginal costing, of marginal costing. Now that should take us to marginal cost equations. 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 I want us to understand these equations because they will assist us moving forward to understand the concept of CVP analysis. So the marginal cost equations ideally number one, we normally talk of contribution. We normally talk of what? Contribution. 
And what you should know, my good student, is that at any given point, whenever you're talking of contribution, ideally, this, we normally tend to look at, this ideally is an alternative measure of what? An alternative measure of profit. This is an alternative measure of profit. Contribution is an alternative measure of profit. And how will we determine our contribution? To determine our contribution, we normally talk of this. We normally talk of our total sales minus total variable costs. This should give us our contribution. So whenever we'll be talking of uh, our contribution, always have it in mind that we are talking of our total sales with less our total variable cost. Don't confuse it with contribution margin because we have contribution and we do have what? Contribution margin. Contribution margin, commonly known as CM, ideally we will be talking of our selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. I want you to mark the difference between the two. I want you to mark the difference between the two. Contribution, we are talking of our total sales minus total variable cost. Contribution margin, we are talking of selling price per unit minus variable cost per, per unit. Ideally, all these are on per unit basis. This we are saying these are per unit. That is selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit minus variable cost per unit. Now, after we've understood this concept, which is very key under CVP, which is very key under CVP, after we are able to understand this concept, my good student, that should take us to one of the main application of CVP analysis. Application of CVP. Application of CVP application of CVP and when you are looking at application of CVP analysis there is always one main application of CVP analysis known as what break even point BEP so we are saying one of the main application of CVP analysis is break even point break even point break even point this is one of the main application of CVP analysis. Break even point. Commonly known as what? BEP. Break even point. Commonly known as what? E, e B, yeah, B, uh, BEP. So, when you are talking of BEP, what should come at the back of our mind, my good students? When you are talking of break even point, which I, is very important, by the way, for those students who are doing in May, Section 2 CPA, talk of AMA, Section 5 CPA, and also for those who are doing probably F2 ACCA and any other course that has management accounting. It is very important for us to understand this concept clearly. It is very important for us to understand this concept clearly. So, whenever we're talking of break even point, ideally, my good students will be looking at. Production level where total revenues. This is production level. This is a production level. Production level. Production level. Production level where total revenues equals total cost. We are saying that this is a production level where our total revenue equals total equals total cost equals total cost equals total cost. So this is our break even point. You are saying break even point is a point whereby our where production level where our total revenue equals to our total cost. And that means that if our total revenue is equal to our total cost. What will be our profit here? 
it means that at this point my profit will be equal to what to zero if our total revenues equals to our total cost that means that our profit is equal to to zero so confidently also you can say a point where profit is equal to what to zero point where profit is equal to zero that is a point of break even that's a point of break even and it is very applicable in our day-to-day -day activities while making this decision more so when we set up a, probably a new business or a new project i want to determine a point whereby i'll start making profit so you'll find that any point above break even point it means that you'll be making profit but before that you'll find that if i'll be operating below break even meaning that you're making losses because at BEP that is where our profit is equal to what is equal to zero so any point above break even point that means that we are making profit and any point below break even it means that we are still operating in losses so we are seeing that uh, application of CVP we've talked about break even point we've clearly described what break even point is now another element that i want us to focus on i want us to determine how will you determine your break even point in the event that you are required to determine break even point how will you determine that one so we are going to break it down we are going to break it down it as if you've never seen this concept anywhere else so to start with let us start with uh, uh, maybe asking ourselves this question. How do you normally determine our profit? How do you normally determine our profit? How do you normally determine our profit? To determine our profit, I know all of us, you can tell me that. To determine our profit, ideally, we normally talk of what? We normally talk of our total revenue minus total cost, right? Total revenue minus our total cost that should give us our profit that should give us our that should give us our profit total revenue minus total cost that should give us our that should give us our profit that should give us our our profit then a good question will be then how do you normally determine our total revenue how will you determine our total revenue to determine our total revenue, we know very well we'll be talking of what? Selling price per unit times what? Times quantity. Selling price per unit times quantity sold. That should give us our uh, total revenue. Where in this case, we can clearly say I'm talking of what? PQ. We are talking of selling price per unit times quantity. That should give us what? Our, our profit or rather our revenue. Now, what about our total cost? What about our total cost? We know very well to determine our total cost. We normally talk of what? We normally talk of total variable cost. Total variable cost plus our fixed cost. This should give us our total cost. But again, I'm going to ask myself, how will you determine our total variable cost? To determine our total variable cost, normally talk of variable cost per unit times number of units. This is variable cost per unit times the number of units. Ideally, we are talking of what? VQ. We are talking of VQ. We are talking of VQ. We are talking of VQ. That is aspect of variable cost per unit times number of times number of units. Times number times number of units. So clearly here we can come and say for us to determine our for us to determine our profit and you guys to look at it very carefully. We can confidently come and say for us to determine our profit, ideally we normally talk of what total revenue, which is PQ, right? Minus total cost, which in this case we've seen is VQ, variable cost, plus our fixed cost plus our fixed cost plus our fixed cost that should give us what that should give us our our profit right so maybe you can break it down and look at this pq if you open our bracket i should be having minus vq right 
minus minus phi x cos because you know very well that positive or uh, negative is stronger than what stronger than positive so therefore we should be talking of minus fixed cost clearly we can see that we do have what like terms here we do have our like terms here which in this case we are talking of what we are talking of q we are talking of q on both sides we are talking of q we are talking of q so therefore we cannot and say that for us to determine our profit is it as if i'm talking of p minus v q minus f so we are talking of selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit times the number of units minus what minus our fixed cost minus our fixed cost and we clearly saw here that that selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit it represented what contribution margin if you can recall when we started Selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit, it represents what? Contribution margin. So confidently, we can come and say that my profit is equal to contribution margin times quantity, okay? Minus fixed cost, minus fixed cost. That should give us our, that should give us our profit. That should give us our profit. Now, up to that point, we are very good. Up to that point, we are very good. But the question is, for us, we want to determine this production level where our total revenue is equal to what is equal to our total cost. Our main aim is to determine production level where our total revenue is equal to our total cost. So the question is, can we determine that one? Yes, we can. Because at this point, my profit is equal to zero. Which, in that case, I'm having CMQ minus fixed cost. By the way, CMQ, that one will also give us what is known as what? Contribution. Whenever I'm talking of selling price minus variable cost times quantity, it as if I'm talking of our total sales minus total variable costs, which in this case we're talking of what? We are talking of contribution, by the way. So, at this point, my profit is equal to, is equal to zero. Right? I need to determine that production level where our profit is equal to zero. Meaning that, our total revenue is equal to our total cost. So if my profit is equal to zero, I need to make Q the subject of this formula of ours. I need to make Q the subject of this formula of ours. The question is, can we really do that? Of course we can do that. Of course we can do that. So in this case, as if I'll be talking of F, which is equal to CMQ. I need Q to be the subject of our formula. So talk of CM, we divide by our CF. That one will cancel each other, right? So we can agree and say that my Q is equal to fixed cost over contribution margin. We can agree and say that our Q, therefore, is equal to fixed cost. We divide by our contribution margin. And basically, this is a point where production level, where my profit will be equal to zero. So therefore, we've attained and we've achieved our break-even point in quantity. Break-even point in quantity, production level, where my profit is equal to zero, this is what we'll be having. So therefore, we can clearly come and say that we have arrived at our break-even point formula. Take this to be our equation number one. Take that to be our equation number one. Take that to be our equation number one. Take that to be our equation number one. And this one, I'm determining break-even point for a single product. This is for a single product. This is for a single product. Whenever I'm dealing with single product, that is break-even point for a single product. Where I'm only having one product. Where we only have one product. Now, after we've looked at that, another concept that I also want us to talk about today, my good student, is this concept. What if I'm required to determine break-even point in value? What if I'm required to determine our break-even point in value? How will you determine our break-even point in value? So that should take us to equation number two. Number two, equation I want us to determine our break-even point in value. Break-even point in 
value, break even point in value, break even point in value. So to determine our break even point in value, to determine our break even point in value, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. Break even point in value, BEP in value. We are going to take our fixed cost, we divide by our contribution margin. Ideally, what you are determining it in equation number one. What I'm going to introduce my good student is what? Selling price per unit. I'm only going to introduce our selling price per unit. That should give us one equation of break-even point in, in value. Or, 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 we can determine our break-even point in value by taking my fixed cost, we divide by CS ratio. We divide by our CS. Probably a person will ask Mualim what is CS. CS in this case stands for what? Stands for contribution to sales ratio. Contribution to sales ratio. Meaning that you're talking of contribution, we divide by our sales. Contribution, we divide by our sales. That should give us, that should give us our CS. That should give us our, our CS. That should give us our CS. Now up to that point, we are very good. Up to that point, we are very, very good. We are very, very good. But again, you know, at times when uh, you are in an examination and you see these figures, you'll be like, oh, which one am I going to use? So I want us to solve that issue right now. The best time to use this formula is when? The best time that you can use this formula is when given, when given, Selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, or quantities. Or quantities. The best time to use this formula is when you are given selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, or, or quantity. And what about the best point to use this formula? The best point to use this formula is when given, when given, Total sales or you are given total variable costs. Meaning that at this point you are not given. At this point not given level of production. Not given level of production. Not given level of production. Or you are not given Q. We are not given our quantity. We are not given Tamita's quantity. Just have it as a summary, we are not given quantities. So that's the best point to use. That's the best point to use this formula. That's the best point to use that formula. That's the best point to use that formula. So basically, you find that this sort you are, this sort you must always have at the back of our mind. This sort you must always have at the back of at the back of our mind. Now, this one is getting interesting, right? It's getting the, getting very, very interesting. Now, look at equation number three. Today, I want us to do a summary of the whole concept of CVP analysis. Look at equation number three. Equation number three, you will be required to determine your target sales. You will be required to determine your target sales. And ideally, you can determine target sales in quantity. How will you determine our target sales in quantity? How will you determine your target sales? You need to achieve a certain level of sales in quantity. How are we going to achieve that using this concept? We'll be talking of our fixed cost plus our target profit. Plus our target profit. Plus our target profit. In this case, you are going to divide by our contribution margin. That is when I'm required to determine our target sales in, in quantity. When I'm required to determine our target sales in quantity, I'll be talking of fixed cost plus target profit. We divide by our contribution margin. What about in the case that we are required to determine our target sales in value? To determine our target sales in value, we are going to talk of fixed cost plus our target profit. We are going to divide by our contribution margin. But this time round, I'm going to introduce what? Selling price per unit. 
we are going to introduce our selling price per unit. That should give us our target sales in, in value. That's one part. Or we can determine our target sales in value by taking our face cost plus our target profit plus our target profit. We divide by what? We divide by our CS ratio. We divide by our CS ratio. And the beauty part of it is that we've already seen how we can determine our CS ratio. We've already seen how we can determine our CS ratio. We've already seen how we can determine our CS ratio. So basically you'll find that this is kind of the whole summary of what you need to know when it comes to the concept of cost, volume, profit analysis. It as if we've done a whole summary of what you need to know when it comes to cost, volume, profit analysis. Now, after you've done this one, another concept that you must always be having at the back of your mind. And that concept, you are going to look at it in our next class. That should be margin of safety. Talk of MOS. We are going to look at this concept in our next class. That is a concept known as what? Margin of safety. Margin of safety. That is a concept known as margin of safety. Margin of safety safety margin of safety margin of safety so we are going to look at this in our next class so kindly i want you to join me in the next class whereby we are going to look at margin of safety we proceed and look at contribution margin or rather break even point for multiple products because whatever we've done that ideally you are just looking at what break even point for single products so I want you guys to join me in the next session whereby we are going to talk of break-even point for multiple products. We look at this concept of margin of safety for us to understand the whole concept well. Then we are going also to proceed and handle an illustration question which will open our mind wide. Which will open our mind wide. To that juncture, thank you so much and let us meet in the next session. I was a in your instructor. CPA Aringo Frederick. And before I finish, if you've not yet downloaded Mdarasa app, probably this video you've just seen probably on YouTube, or you've seen it on Facebook, or you've seen it on Instagram, or in any of our social media platform. So if you've not yet downloaded Mdarasa app, go to Play Store, search Mdarasa. That is the best e-learning platform. Search Mdarasa, download the app create account, and you can access these full course videos to study at your own time. And by the way, you can still download these videos to watch even without internet. So thank you so much, and let us meet in the next session. Thank you.